And so since it looks like grass, it will say I sell nickels and dimes of grass. My name is Dominic Nell, uh, also known as Farmer Nell. And we're in uh, 21217, that's Zone 17, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, at the Crispus Attics Rec Center. Basically, what I'm doing here today is um, introducing my Be More Green program to the youth of this neighborhood, which entails um, teaching them how to grow indoors in the form of microgreens. There's also um, growing outdoors, um, raised beds, urban farming, and um, teaching them how to um, maximize products uh, through cold press juicing um, and just learning about nutrients. As far as lead poisoning in the soil is concerned, um, it's a real issue in Baltimore City. Uh, lead was used in a lot of the um, piping as well in the buildings. And so uh, we have a lot of vacant houses here and the city's um, long-term strategy for addressing that is, is demolition. And in that demolition, that lead it becomes settled in the soil. It takes no less than like you know six months and that'll be a grassy area. And so I look to take advantage of those areas with urban farming in different neighborhoods, but you can't grow in the soil directly. So that's why, that's one of the challenges that we have and we have to use the process that we call raised beds um, and then bringing clean soil that, that um, in. And also keeping that soil monitored because um, lead uh, can spread and, and, and it stays in the soil for, you know, forever. So it's not something that water can wash away. It's actually something that water spreads. A lot of the school, old, old inner city schools still have lead piping. You look at all of these inner cities where the people are being exposed to the high levels of lead. Baltimore, Flint, Detroit, Cleveland, Newark. And you ask yourself, what do they have in common? And the first answer on top of my head would be, they have a large density of a black community. Just off the top of my head. A new study has discovered 3,000 neighborhoods in America where children suffer from lead poison. We have over 4 million kids right now living in environments where there is lead-based paint. A common problem in places like Baltimore, where most inner city housing was built before Congress banned lead paint lead paint and lead pipes, they're concentrated in poor communities, which gets to a more fundamental question, which is what makes a community poor in the first place? Um, my BMO Green program is based off of uh, my business, which is called City Weeds. And City Weeds is, is the business of growing and selling microgreens. The microgreens come in, um, you know, they, they come in different patches. So this is a dime right here. But you can also break it down into thirds. Uh, a dime meaning that means $10. Um, but if you break it down into thirds, cut it into thirds with scissors, you can sell them for $5 a piece at farmer's markets. So those would be nickels. And so since it looks like grass, it would say I sell nickels and dimes of grass. So in this neighborhood, that's a, a, that's a, a reference or a slang to uh, different paraphernalia. And so, um, and substances. So the whole City Weeds mission is focused on addressing those same neighborhoods that products that um, are deadly to the human makeup are being sold on the street corners and changing that, demo changing that narrative and that demographic with selling products that promote life, uh, nutrient dense such as microgreens. It's like, it takes $10 to grow this tray of microgreens and you can make up to $120 off of it if you break it down into nickels. So, <clears throat> To explain what microgreens are, microgreens is the stage in between a seed and, and, and a mini vegetable. So you have a seed, then a sprout, and then it develops leaves and it becomes a microgreen. And microgreen just means that it's just the mini version of that vegetable. So for instance, we have micro peas. These are peas. And a week ago, they were a seed. So now, the, this right here is 40 to 100 times more nutritional value and nutrient density than the fully grown vegetable. It's almost like the products that are being sold on the, the block to give people that quick fix, that quick high. This is the, the same thing as far as energy. Juice and microgreens go to the body immediately. You're getting the nutrients in the four to eight hours, and that's providing actual alkaline energy to the body, and it's just promoting energy. 
my agenda was getting nutrients and healthy products, you know, in neighborhoods that wouldn't be have access to it. This neighborhood is classified as a food desert. Today, I'm walking around the city spreading the awareness about lead poisoning in the community. I want to give my energy to things that could create solutions. Hey, how you doing? Hi, ma'am, how are you doing? The Baltimore um, City Health Department has this property listed as having a lead paint violation. I really like the fact that Michael's come back um, to really, you know, make a difference here in Baltimore. Um, he and I go way back and just taking the words um, years ago, a buddy of mine looked at Mike, Michael's initials, MKW, and he was like, yeah, MKW. He was like, yeah, Michael Kendrick Williams. We was like, no, man, making kids win. So MKW stands for making kids win. So it's, it's, it goes hand in hand with the initiative that we're doing. It's like, that's the whole, the whole goal out here overall with all these tools and different mechanisms of education is just making kids win. And so I'm really happy that Michael's um, you know, here to be a part of this.